watch the news, it freaks me out. It makes me feel all paranoid and I get all bloody anxious and scared. I go to bed at night and I'm worried that some old lady's gonna smash her car through my bedroom window. <laughs> and I live on the second floor. <laughs> I'm CJ Fortuna, stand-up comedian, actor, and star of a new film called The Heckler. During production, I researched my role by talking to other comedians about how they got into comedy and what it's like to be heckled. And the best way to do this was in a bar over a beer. Well, I'm down here at the uh, Northcote Social Club here in Northcote on High Street. It's a great venue and I have with me Mr. Billy Connolly. What? Hey? You, wait, you do know I'm not Billy Connolly, right? Are you not? Who are no, you? I'm, my name is David. Yeah. The last time Billy Connolly looked like this was, was when I was born. I'm a man from are Ireland. Are you from Ireland? You're not yeah. Billy from Scotland. Am I wearing a kilt even? Do I have a thistle in my lapel? No. There's do I do this? Hey. Hey. Hello. Cut all that. You do know that. Oh, you do sorry. Know that. Uh, yep. Yeah, Mr. Dave Callan, how are you? Hello Dave? there, CJ. Thanks for boop. I don't know why you did that. No, that's that's cool. Okay. I'm cool with that. Yep. Thanks for coming coming in anyway. Thank you. I will have a few drinks. Yep. And I want to get I want to get behind behind the beard. Yeah. You yeah. want to probe me? Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Yeah. You've been in the game for how long? Uh, 20 years now. It's yep. a long time. Yeah. The earlier you start, the better, because it's something that's learnt organically and through experience. You can't, you can go to school, but you know, you can go to comedy school, but the only learning you really do properly is when you get out there and try it. Absolutely, and I think that uh, the older you get, the more experience of life you've had, so mm. there's more to take from. Yeah, yeah, your experience ramps up and your, your material gets better because you've more to draw on, but the experience of being on stage and experiencing that stagecraft is you know, it's something you can only do live in the field. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Would you like a drink? I've got a couple of drinks yep. coming. Here they thank are now. You. Ah, oh. thank you. Ah, thank you. My shout, Dave. Oh. So, uh, nice. Cheers oh. there. Oh. What's up? Hey, uh, I will cheers you. I will cheers yeah. you, chink. Yeah. But I don't, I don't drink. I don't drink. Yeah. Hops and barley. Right. Uh, I don't drink those things. Well, I got them especially, but uh, it's all right. Get you a juice or something. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Orange juice, something like that. Cool. I would have been like, in the olden days, I would have been like that one pirate who didn't have rum. He was like, no, I love orange juice. And I would have not died from scurvy, so winning. Guess what though, Dave? Yeah. No one drinks anymore, except for me. <laughs> like, yeah, as yeah. in like, comedians mm. back in the day, they were all hopped up on something. Yes, I don't know when it changed. I think mid 2000s, people went, I'm gonna stop getting off my head so, so my brain works properly. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's probably a good idea. Yeah. Anyway, cheers to Thank you, you, my yeah. friend. Now, that barman's very quick with the OJ pour, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so I want to I want to find out, you know, where it all began. Well, it all began in Ireland in 1974. I got born to a lady and a man. Oh my God, you've yeah. gone way back. Oh, is that too far? Okay. In 1993, I went to uni, and there was like a competition at uni, and it went well. I think it came second or something, and second is a great place to come because. If you come first, you get this huge wave of satisfaction and you go, well, I'm the master of that. Mm. Whereas if you come second, you're like, what if I tried a bit harder? What if I'd given it a bigger push? That was in Perth. Yeah. Started in Perth. And early on, did you ever get heckled? The thing is, I, I don't get heckled that badly, um, which is good. I'm, I'm more of a philosopher about heckling rather than, you know, someone with, um, with horrible kind of experiences happening to them. I always give a heckler a chance. Because you see a lot of comedians, less so nowadays, but certainly in the older times where they'd have standard kind of comebacks to hecklers and just shut them down straight away. Sometimes they don't even hear what they said. And I think it's important to listen to the heckler. I think a well-timed heckler is great if they interject, like right after your punchline, if they come out with something that leads you off on another extra tangent, that's an excellent yeah. heckle. Tell me of a, a gig you've done that may have not been pleasant. Oh, mate. Have you, you got a few? You know, you go, through, you go through your career doing comedy and you begin to get a second sense for gigs that are not going to be good and you learn how to say no. I got into this environment, it was about this time of day, it was like about two o'clock and they were just hammered, they were just all getting on it and 
the PA, I could hear the PA, the guy was talking on it, trying to keep a bit of control, and you couldn't hear it properly. Right. I've gone, oh, this is, oh, this is going to be awful. Gotten to the side of the stage, there's kids running around on the stage, it's bedlam. He gets up on the stage and he's like, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. And he just says shut up about 50 times. Mm. And then half the room shut up, and the other half was still a wall of sound. And slightly offended, yeah. And, yeah, right, <laughs> offside, completely offside. And he goes, now there's a guy, he, uh, apparently he's pretty funny, I've never heard of him. Please welcome Dave. Didn't say my surname or anything, so I cut my losses. I think I did about 15. Did you um, lose your way at one stage throughout your career and maybe think, I can do better than this? Because this is what I'll say to you. I remember you doing your thing hmm. in the comedy world, and then for a while there, I didn't see you. You disappeared. I don't know whether you climbed a mountain in Tibet or what you did, because when you got back, you yeah. transformed. You'd lost heaps of weight, and you'd just stopped drinking. Is that right? Am I right? Uh, basically, what happened was uh, I got to New Year's Eve, and I realized that to get drunk, I would have to drink so much alcohol that I'd be sick for a few days because my tolerance was really high. Uh, I think I was like four beers in, and I didn't even feel anything. And I was like, oh, I'm going to have to drink like 10 times as much as this. Mm. then that's no way to start the new year. So why don't I just go for a year drinking nothing and I'll start right now. So I started New Year's Eve at about 7 p.m. and I didn't drink and I just watched everyone else getting really hammered because nobody drinks like they do on New Year's Eve. So it was a really good kind of example of how negative alcohol is for someone's psychology. Yeah. And so I just saw people deteriorate during the night but simultaneously think they were becoming more and more awesome. And I just went, that's what I do every Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Because I, I used to have a three-day weekend. Yeah. And the other thing along the way, I've, I've, I've noticed with comedians like yourself and um, Dave Hughes is another one and, and heaps of others, is that they transform themselves through the journey of doing comedy. Yeah. Like, for example, you, you stop drinking because you want to tune your tool. <laughs> I'm always trying to tune my tool. Yeah. Yeah, as a single mm. man. I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> mm, no. What other advice would you give to someone, let's say, if they wanted to do stand-up comedy? I would say, you know, I would say the, the most important thing is wait until you've got a bit of experience before you go dark. You see a lot of people getting up and they want to be noticed and they want to be cutting edge straight away. And they go to all those taboo topics we all know about. And they just don't have the experience and the skills to, to back it up. And perhaps the insight from, from maturity to, to tackle those subjects well. So I'd say, if you've got something to say about really full-on dark topics, maybe really have a good think about it first. Good. Yeah. I like that. But the other thing I want to tell people who start comedy is, just because people are laughing doesn't mean you're saying the right things. Like, sometimes, you know, you get rewarded for bad behavior. Yes. People laugh at racism, people laugh at sexism, unfortunately, so... So that's a wonderful thing you've said, because... You know, I've been doing it as long as you have, yeah. to a degree. And only now am I starting to sort of go, you know what, I don't want to say that, that gag that I wrote 10 years ago, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, it's right, not absolutely. What I, it's not how I feel, it's yeah. not what I think. Mm -hmm. It's funny, it works, yeah. but you know what, I'd rather not do it, because it's not me, it doesn't represent where you I'm are at. Now. And when you're starting out, you're just cultivating your routine and you, you need every laugh you can get. So sometimes you go for a cheap laugh, sometimes you make fun of, somebody in the crowd and they go home and they, they've had their night ruined. So yeah, you gotta, you gotta realize that, you know, laughter doesn't mean you're doing well. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, one more question for you. Okay. Three words. How would you describe yourself in three words? Viking, pirate, wizard. Wow, that's a lot of yelling out, Arr, into a crystal ball. <laughs> I don't feel as manly drinking my... Not with the juice, yeah. Do you remember in the old days people used to dance in videos to their songs? Now they're swinging around in giant balls, licking hammers in their fucking underpants? <laughs> How come when Miley Cyrus licks a hammer in her underpants, it's artistic and creative, but when I lick a hammer in my underpants, I'm wasted and have to leave Bunnings immediately. 